Hey everyone, Nicole here with another how-to video from the Estes Education Studio. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to fly safely and a little bit more information about the model rocket safety code. You don't need all this to fly safely. All you need to do is follow the safety code. Model rocketry is more safe than playing soccer or playing football. You might be surprised by that, but it's true. There have been hundreds of millions of model rocket launches and a near flawless safety record. So you may be wondering, how have they done it? How have they made so many safe launch experiences? The model rocket safety code is the answer. It was established early on in model rocketry by the National Association of Rocketry, or the NAR for short. This allows you and your students to stay safe and experience the magic of model rocket flight. This is How to Fly Safely. Hit it. start by talking about the materials that make up a model rocket. You want to make sure that all the materials that you use are lightweight and it will cause minimal damage upon impact. These materials might include things like balsa wood, light plastics, paper, cardboard, all perfect materials for constructing a model rocket. However, things like heavy metals or anything that's really hard, not a great idea to include in a model rocket. If you're using any Estes kits, you don't have to worry. All of our rockets are built with these safety standards in mind. However, if you are feeling really brave and you want to build a model rocket from scratch all on your own with no instructions, you definitely want to make sure that you're using the materials required to keep your model rocket safe. Once you have a model rocket constructed, the next thing you want to consider is stability. There are two different methods you can use to make sure your rocket is stable. The first is using a rocket simulation software. These are things like RockSim or Open Rocket. You can input data and information about the design of your rocket and the software itself will be able to tell you if your rocket will be stable or not. The second method you could use is the overhead swing test. Tie a string around the center of gravity and swing the rocket overhead. If it flies straight, without spinning uncontrollably, the rocket is stable. If you're unsure where to go from here, learn more by watching our How To Fly With Stability video. If you use one of the Estes kits, you don't have to worry. We test all of our rockets to make sure they're stable and actually build over stability into each rocket configuration. The last thing we wanna consider in thinking about the safety of the rocket itself is the size and the weight of the rocket. Historically, model rockets were very, very tiny. Over time, the size of the rockets have increased pretty dramatically, but size isn't so important when we think about the safety of the rocket. What we really wanna focus more on is the weight of the rocket itself. As outlined in the model rocket safety code, the weight of your rocket has to be below 1500 grams. Let's recap on what we've learned so far. The first thing is the rocket needs to be made of lightweight materials that will cause minimal damage upon impact. The second thing is making sure your rocket is stable. There are two methods for testing rocket stability, using rocket simulation software or using the overhead swing test. The third thing you need to consider is that your rocket weighs less than 1500 grams. Now let's move on to engine safety. First, you want to make sure that you use engines that are commercially available and certified by the National Association of Rocketry. Certified engines limit the size and power and increase the reliability so you can stay safe every single launch. Next, you want to make sure that your engine contains less than 125 grams of slow burning propellant. So I want to talk about an important note because many teachers come up and ask this question all the time. 
That is, are model rockets fireworks? The answer is no, they're not. And let's talk about the four reasons why model rockets are different than fireworks. The first reason is the electrical ignition system. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video, but essentially because of the electrical ignition system that a model rocket uses, you can stand a safe distance away when you're launching. A firework, a little bit different. The second is model rockets have a recovery system, allowing the rocket to safely and gently land back down on the ground. The third reason is there are strict manufacturing codes when developing, testing, and producing model rockets. And finally, the National Fire Protection Association classifies rockets as separate from fireworks. And there you have it. Model rockets are not fireworks. Case closed. The importance of buying a commercially available engine is that we know it's safe. That means that you can't modify it or change it. In fact, the model rocket safety code strictly prohibits any modifications or tampering to any model rocket engines. Just leave them alone, let them be. So let's recap engine safety. One, make sure that you use engines that are commercially available. Two, make sure that they are certified by the National Association of Rocketry. Three, the model rocket safety code strictly prohibits tampering or modifying any engine. A recovery system is a device that's incorporated into a model rocket for the purpose of returning it to the ground safely. You want your rocket to gently land on the ground rather than plummet into the dirt. The model rocket safety code requires you to put a recovery system into every rocket you launch. There are many different types of recovery systems you can choose from. Whether you choose a parachute or a streamer, that's really up to you but you wanna make sure it's appropriate for the size of your rocket and the field flying size. After you have a beautiful rocket launch and you see your recovery system pop out in the sky, you wanna pay attention to where your rocket lands. You never want to recover your rocket from any dangerous places like tall trees, power lines, or other dangerous places. Pro tip, if you're using a parachute or a streamer as a recovery system, you wanna make sure you inspect it before inserting it into your rocket. Check to make sure that the shroud lines are connected to a parachute. Always make sure there's no wear or damage, especially no large holes. Make a good inspection, insert your recovery wadding and your parachute, and you're ready to fly. Let's recap this section. First, you always want to include a recovery system inside your rocket. Be sure you don't forget it. Always inspect it before launch every single time. Choose the right recovery system for the size of your rocket and the flying field. And finally, never recover your rocket from unsafe places. There's various types of launch equipment that we need to make sure that we can launch our rockets safely. Let's start with the electronic ignition system. Before we get into all the safety benefits of using this type of system, let's break down the different parts and how they work. Let's start with the launch controller. The launch controller includes a safety key, a 15 foot cable with two micro clips attached at the end. When you press launch, an electrical current travels from the launch controller through the starter and ignites your engine. The model rocket safety code requires that you stand back 15 feet for any engines that are size D or smaller. If you launch anything bigger than a D engine, you'll need to stand back at least 30 feet. Don't forget, you must insert the safety key into the controller before you press launch. You wanna make sure that you hold the safety key with you at all times. This will prevent little Johnny in the back from pressing launch while you're up at the pad helping other students. The second piece of launch equipment we wanna to cover today is the launch pad. This includes the launch rod and the blast deflector plate. 
The launch rod is there to stabilize the rocket until it's moving fast enough that the fins can take over the stability. This means that your rocket's going to fly straight up off the pad and reach maximum altitudes. Otherwise, it'll just wobble around uncontrollably. Definitely not safe. Always make sure your launch pad is sturdy and doesn't easily tip over. The blast deflector plate is there to prevent any fires from starting or any damage to your launch pad. Finally, we always include a launch rod cap into every launch pad. You always want to make sure that you put the launch rod cap on the launch rod when you're not using it. Let's recap. Be sure to always stand at least 15 feet away from your launch pad. Your launch pad should include a launch rod and a blast deflector plate, and only use approved electronic ignition systems. Now that we've covered all of the things that you'll need to launch your rocket, Let's talk about some launch day requirements, beginning with the countdown. Now, you might think, look at how cool that is, everyone counts down from five or 10, and that's just like the fun part about it. However, this is actually an important safety feature in launching a rocket. When everyone counts down together, this ensures that everyone is paying attention and knows exactly when the rocket is going to launch. When you have a large group of students, be sure that everyone is counting down every single time. Now, counting down from 10 every time might get a little redundant, so you can choose to count down from five or three, whatever feels good for you. The next requirement you need to consider when launching rockets is the field flying size. You wanna make sure that you have enough space to launch your rockets safely. The bigger the engine that you use, the bigger the space that you'll need, as you can see from the chart here. You wanna make sure you set up your launch field in a way where everyone stays safe and knows where they can stand. A great thing for teachers is to get a folding table out so that you can create a barrier between your students and the launch pad. This is also a great place to put all of your extra supplies. You might also wanna consider coning off an area for audience so that they know where to stand and they're not gonna interfere with any of your rocket launches. Another important consideration is the angle of your launch rod. On those perfect days where it's nice and sunny, no wind, you can keep your launch rod entirely vertical. However, if you are experiencing some slight wind, you may want to angle your launch rod slightly towards the wind. But do keep in mind, the model rocket safety code prohibits you from angling your launch rod more than 30 degrees from vertical. Remember, if it's too windy, you don't want to launch at all. We all like launching on those perfect sunny days. However, the model rocket safety code pretty much requires it. Here are some different weather considerations to think about before you launch. The first weather consideration is the wind. You can't launch if it's too windy. And you might be thinking, what is too windy? It's actually 20 miles an hour or higher. There's two reasons why you can't launch in high winds. The first being, if it's so windy, your rocket's gonna blow away into trees or on top of buildings and you won't be able to get them back. Another weather consideration is visibility. You have to see your rocket when it launches. Therefore, you never wanna launch at nighttime or when it's too cloudy. In addition, you never wanna launch when there's aircraft flying overhead. So if you see an airplane or other aircraft, maybe a UFO, you definitely wanna hold off on launching until the aircraft passes. So what happens when you put the rocket on the pad, you get everyone ready, everyone's counting down, and your student presses launch and nothing happens? We call this a misfire. They happen from time to time. When a misfire occurs, you want to wait 60 seconds before you approach the pad. After you've waited the 60 seconds, you and your student can approach the pad. Check to make sure that the microclips were attached properly and aren't touching each other. They may also have fallen off. You also want to check to ensure that the starter was inserted appropriately and those wires weren't touching each other either. This will short the circuit. Let's recap. One, 
Make sure everyone in the crowd is counting down and paying attention. Two, make sure you have the right launch field size for your engines. Three, make sure wind conditions are optimal for flying a rocket. And four, if your rocket misfires, wait 60 seconds before approaching the pad. Let's talk about fire safety. You want to make sure that you clear away any brush or dried leaves before you launch. In addition, if you live in a place where it's consistently dry and really hot, you may just want to check with local fire bands to make sure it's actually permitted for you to launch on that day. And finally, the best place to launch is in an area with green grass or even on concrete if you can find it. In conclusion, you always want to stay safe when flying model rockets. So be sure to look in the description below to get your copy of the model rocket safety code and share that with any person who's going to be launching with you. When in doubt, be sure to email us at educator at estesrockets.com for any safety related questions. This was how to fly safely. And now you're ready to launch. Thanks for watching with Estes Education. If you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be alerted for new content. We'll see you soon.